Hi guys, good afternoon. Once again, this is Sir Dardar and welcome to episode 3 of Usapang Eskwela. For this afternoon, uh, the topic that I want to talk to you about is something that is very very close to my heart and it has something to do with what I have been doing for the last 5 years. Now in those 5 years, I think that I have had so many realizations along the way and it is those realizations that um, I want to share with you um, and hopefully it, they will have a positive impact in the way that you approach your teaching especially when handling students and in the way that you approach learning from a student's point of view okay so without much ado let's get started roll credits And we are back. Okay? Just like what the intro stated, I am here to talk about the life of a class advisor, uh, especially one that is assigned to the senior high school department. But before I do that, before I give you my realizations and my tips, um, allow me to give you a little backstory. About six years ago, that was 2014, I was assigned uh, or I was a college professor, okay? Um, I taught freshmen, or the first year college students, and, well, I had fun. I had lots of fun being a college professor. However, um, nearing the end of 2015, my then boss approached us and told us that, uh, the faculty members who taught general education subjects, especially the subjects assigned to first-year college students, would be transferred to the senior high school. And as such, we would have to consider the possibility that we would be assigned in the senior high school department. And that came as a shock to me because uh, that was still my second year in teaching and I did not want to transfer to senior high school. I had... Uh, apprehensions about it because I did not want to teach in the basic education uh, department. However, as the implementation of the K-12 program was inevitable, um, I had to embrace it with open arms and by, by some, the summer of 2016, um, I applied for a teaching position uh, for the senior high school department. Well, luckily, I was able to get in, I was hired, and uh, lo and behold, um, I was officially uh, a high school teacher. So, um, during its first implementation, I was already given an advisory class. And that was shocking because as a college professor, we don't have advisory classes. We just jump from one section to another, but we don't spend one year together we don't uh, or i don't teach the same section every semester or for one whole year uh, my students keep changing every semester but this time i was assigned to monitor a whole section or a section it was a section of my own and they were my responsibility and that was a scary thought. And I know it is scary, especially for those of you who are first-time class advisors. It is a scary concept to be assigned to a section and be the person responsible for them. But um, it is hardly in my nature to back down from a challenge. And because I found it to be scary yet challenging, I said yes. Um... I was assigned, or my first section was named Matteo Ricci, okay, uh, there were 25 children in that section, and, um, well, to say the least, my students made it quite easy for me to be a first-time advisor, but um, what were the 
challenges that I encountered. One, I did not have sufficient knowledge on how to be a class advisor. And it was difficult for me to be um, a, a class advisor because I had 25 different children to monitor. I know most of you have more students in your classes, but to me, it was scary enough to to attend to one student. It was even scarier to try and attend to all 25. And these are 25 unique individuals with um, unique backgrounds, with unique experiences. And um, I needed to find a way to combine these 25 students and create one class. And so uh, I experimented. It was a process of trial and error. And I admit that uh, being a greenhorn in in the class moderator field, um, my first section was the lab rat, okay, the lab rat section. However, along the way, I realized that I had a knack for for moderatorship, and it got easier and easier and easier until such time that I was able to handle them um smoothly okay and it was my first section that gave me my my moniker my my nickname although that nickname evolved over time but they were the first ones to call me father not father priest but as a father figure and um their term of endearment for me was dada that's where it all started they called me Dada. And they are the only ones who can call me Dada. Or at least that batch is the only one that can call me Dada. The rest of the batches cannot. Okay, I'm sorry, there's just a uh, special privilege given to that batch because they were the first ones. So, uh, being a father figure to them, I had, I had many obstacles along the way. But... Um, it was during uh, that time that I acquired my realizations. The ones that I used in the second batch, the third, and the fourth. And the same one that I will use, hopefully, if I still get a section this incoming school year, 2020-2021. And so, what are these realizations? Or what are these tips? Okay, let's start with the realizations. One. You can never please everybody. In every section, there will always be one or two or three that will not appreciate your approach. And that is fine. Okay, um, Do not discriminate them. Instead, um, welcome them still. But there will always be students who will go against the pack if that applies. Number two, you cannot be the same person for each child okay each student has a different need from their class advisor one needs a mentor one needs a coach one needs a cheerleader one needs a parent one needs a big brother one needs a friend you cannot be the same person for each of them and so um, you have to improvise you have to be flexible and try to adjust to each student i know it's a big thing but you're going to have to do it if you want to be effective. If you want to get to know them better, then you have to be a different person each and every time. Um, number three, third realization is they will look to you for guidance. In every step, they will look to you, especially if you have already made an impact on them. Um, because they will see you as the more knowledgeable adult, then... They will look to you for guidance and you must be ready for it because whenever they ask you to decide on something or to help them decide on something, you must be ready to lend an open ear. Not always an advice, but lend an open ear. Okay? Number four, your students know the answers to their questions, but they might need to hear it from you. But don't give it to them all the time i found that it helps sometimes if you don't give advice at all what you do is you listen and you ask questions 
allow your students to come up with the answers on their own because when they do that then there's ownership of na- of knowledge or an ownership of the realization and once that happens then it will stick with them until they grow old number five and i think this is the 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 most significant realization i've had in all the the years that i have been a class advisor um no batch is the same therefore you cannot apply the same strategy twice okay there there may be tried and tested strategies but the way you approach your students cannot stay the same for each batch you have to figure out um a unique strategy in relating to your next section so what are the tips that i have for those of you who are just starting out as class advisors and for those who want to know more about being an advisor um in order to make your experience more beautiful more meaningful and in a way um seasoned okay if it were a dish if it were something that you would cook your your section would be something that is very palatable and something that is delicious a delicious memory think msg okay um M- mon- monosodium glutamate okay but uh, just like the function of msg which is to bring out the flavor in food um uh, not the not the other one not the adverse effects but uh this one is intended to bring out the flavor in your food so for for you to bring out the flavor in your section think msg this is your task as a class advisor one m stands for monitor and motivate you need to monitor their performance and i don't mean just as a section monitor them as individuals and to motivate them okay as a section and as individuals uh, some of these students might have a uh, certain talent uh, they might be good at dancing singing you have to be there to motivate them because they know that they can sing sometimes they need someone to affirm uh, to affirm them of the talents that they have and we have to motivate them and be there when they need someone to watch them perform okay next socialize i think this is one component that um i have learned to enhance over the years you socialize with your students i don't mean go out and drink what i'm saying is spend time sit down with your students and talk to them uh do not moralize okay that's the one problem with most or some of the advisors they sit down and moralize they tell them well, don't do this don't do that uh uh-uh. these children will not listen to you all the time instead socialize let them talk be open to the possibility of conversations dealing with um something that is non-academic something that they want to talk to someone about but um they can't find one so they find you so socialize engage in a conversation um talk about their hobbies talk about their love life if possible because they will talk to you as soon as they feel comfortable um engaging in a conversation with their class advisors they will keep on talking to you and by keeping by by maintaining that open line of communication you will get to know your students even more and that i think is very very important for you to know your students not just by name but by heart you know their personality you know what irks them you know what motivates them that's very important and these things can only come out in in constant and meaningful conversation lastly the g is guide and counsel um guide why guide because senior high school is is the the tipping point it's the gateway to college to adulthood and they need much guidance in terms of choosing proper relationships in terms of um, their career path in terms of what they want to take as a course in college that one is going to play a key role or this one is going to be a key role in uh, you as a class advisor and to counsel most of the time these students will have problems at home problems with their friends problems with themselves and by counseling 
I mean two things. One, listen. Listen to these students. Let them air out. Let them vent out. So as to alleviate the, the burden that they feel. And number two, to be able to bridge them to people who can help them best. Um, I know that to give advice to students might be very perilous and dangerous if you are not trained in handling um, these things, for example, mental health uh, problems. But what I'm saying is, when you detect that your students have problems related to mental health or self-identity or something that happened at home, abuse, then it is your job to to bridge them to the authorities, to a guidance counselor, to to police enforcers, or to, to law enforcement, and so on and so forth, all to help your students, okay? So, if you want to bring out the flavor in that section, then think MSG. Motivate, or monitor and motivate, socialize, and guide and counsel. Well, um... I guess that would be all for today. I hope that uh, class advisors or those of you who are still starting out as class advisors uh, have realized or have acquired a little bit of enlightenment from the topic that we have for today. So if uh, you do encounter these things, then you know what to do. That being said, that would be all for today. Until next episode, Pugay Kamay!